water hardness, we shall be interested in finding out and defining water hardness. What is that is in water that will make the water hard? What are the ions in water that will make that water hard? Now, after we've done that, we'll be in a position to tell how do we soften the water? And what are the effects? Does it have an advantage? Does it have disadvantages? Uh, to start us off, we shall start by observing a creep uh, that will help to clarify a few of the issues and maybe come up with a definition of uh, hardness of water. And today we're going to do a soap demonstration showing hard versus soft water and the effect on your soaps and cleaning chemicals. Today's soap demonstration, I'm using Grand Rapids City water, which is hard, and then I have two flasks of soft water. We're going to put the same amount of soap in each flask. There, now I've got the same amount of soap, and right away I can see some cloudiness developing right there in that hard water flask. Soft water flask, when I swirl it, still looks nice and clear. Now, what happens in your dishwasher, clothes washer, shower, where you're trying to clean your skin and hair? We get some bubbles in the hard water. Ooh, we get lots of bubbles in the soft water. I'm going to shake that one too. Look at those nice suds we get in the soft water. The hard water one doesn't have so much. And that's because it's fighting with the soap and the hard water together. They make for a soap scum. And it presents a challenge because you use more soap and more cleaning chemicals when you're trying to clean your hair, your clothes, your dishes. And the interesting thing too is just a little bit of hardness can really change what's happening in your water. So right there, I just added a little bit of hard water, and you can already see these bubbles are turning kind of flat, whereas the soft water flask, they stay nice and foamy. And that is uh, what really hard water is. So we define, from that group, we can come up with a definition of water hardness. We define hard water as water which does not form rather easily. So that will be our working definition. Water which does not form rather easily uh, with soap. On, on the contrary, the water that forms rather easily with soap will be said to be soft water. Now, uh, so what causes uh, water hardness is a dissolve. Note that they are, they must be Dissolved. Dissolved calcium and magnesium ions is what causes water hardness. So the water may contain other ions, may contain sodium ions, may contain iron too, but all those do not contribute to water hardness. I want to say here that uh, water may contain sodium ions, like water that contains brine may not form rather easily with soap, but such water is never said to be hard. Now, the reason why soap, uh, salt and water do not form rather easily with soap is that uh, so, uh, the, the soap does not dissolve in the first place. Soap will not dissolve in, uh, uh, in, uh, in, in water that contains sodium chloride. So that water is never said to be hard, yet it does not form rather easily with soap. So strictly, the ions that contribute for uh, hardness of water are the calcium and the magnesium ions. Now let us uh, find out why uh, the water that contains calcium and magnesium ions does not form uh, rather easily. The for water hardness is very simple. All it takes is a clear glass, water and soap. It has to be a true soap like Dr. Steele. A detergent won't work. A true soap causes the minerals in the water to precipitate out. So here I have, to show you the difference, a glass of filtered water and a glass of tap water. When I add a squirt of soap to the filtered water, the water remains clear. There are no minerals in it for the soap to engage. This water is not hard. Now let's see with the tap water. You'll notice that the water is turning cloudy. There's a reaction. Why then from that creep? Well, is it possible to tell why? Water which contains calcium and magnesium ions will not form rather easily. And the 
Simple answer to that is that when you put soap in water that contains calcium ions, you observe you observe, the, the water becomes turbid and white precipitate is formed in that, in that water. Where does that precipitate come from? Now, soap forms insoluble calcium and magnesium salt. So, if we can represent soap to be an ion like that, then the calcium salt of that, we can write something like that, and that is in sorry state. So we see something that is called scum. Scum will be formed, and this until you are able to precipitate all the calcium and magnesium ions, you will not be able to get. Uh, you will not be able to get a ratha. So that is why hard water does not form ratha easily. We saw because you need to first precipitate the calcium and magnesium ions so that you can get uh, so that you can get rather. Now there are two types of hardness. Now we have some type of hardness that we call temporary hardness. Now this is a type of hardness that can be removed uh, by boiling. So, uh, temporary hard water will contain the hydrogen carbonate of calcium and magnesium. So what will happen when you heat? Temporary hard water. It will. It will now. now it, the, the temporary hard water uh, decomposes. Eh? Yeah, they, they decompose on heating to boiling to form uh, the carbonate. The, to form the carbonate. So if it was magnesium hydrogen carbonate, those ones dissolve in water. But uh, when you heat. You get the calcium carbonate that does not uh, dissolve, that does not. So we no longer have the calcium ion in. So you remember, for the ions to be offensive, they must be dissolved. They must be dissolved. Otherwise, uh, if the ions are in sorry state, then uh, they don't uh, cause uh, hardness of water. Now, uh, Apart from uh, boiling, we have other methods of softening uh, a temperate hard water. We can add we can add calcium hydroxide. This is called the crack method. The crack method addition of calcium hydroxide. But remember, you must add a calculated amount of calcium hydroxide because if you add excess calcium hydroxide, you will be introducing the calcium ions. You can also add ammonia solution. Ammonia solution. Now, we, we notice that when we talk of calcium hydrocarbonate, when you bubble carbon four oxide in excess of cas in excess in calcium hydroxide, so it looks like the ammonia hydroxide being basic will react with excess carbonic acid. It will react with the excess carbonic acid that takes you back. To the calcium carbonate, the calcium carbonate. So, uh, addition of uh, ammonium hydroxide and the addition of calcium hydroxide are other methods that can be used to strictly uh, remove uh, temporary hardness of water. Now, what about permanent hardness of water? Well, when do you say that water is permanently hard? Uh, the opposite uprising. Uh, from, there is nothing permanent about permanent hardness of water. Actually, it can be softened, but it cannot be softened by boiling. So, what causes the, 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 the permanent hardness of water? The presence of calcium and magnesium ions, but in form of the chloride, uh, uh, the sulfate, and probably the nitrogen. So, you note that if it is magnesium chloride, you heat it to boiling, the, the, it cannot decompose to an insoluble substance. So it will remain in, so unless you heat to evaporation in a method that you call a distillation. So you cannot decompose the sulfate and the chloride of calcium and magnesium. Therefore, you cannot remove uh, permanent hardness by boiling. So what are the methods available for the removal? Over permanent hardness of water. Now, the methods that are, uh, that we use to remove uh, permanent hardness of water uh, can also be used for temporary hardness. So you note uh, the method for temporary hardness are strictly for temporary hardness, but the method for permanent hardness, removal of permanent hardness of water, can still apply to the temporary hardness of water. And uh, some of those methods in, in, include the use of a nylon exchange resin. Uh, this, this is simply 
a framework of an organic substance on which sodium ions are attached. So when you pass water containing magnesium and calcium ions, the calcium and magnesium ions are exchanged for the, 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 the sodium ions. So in goes, in will go the water that contains calcium and magnesium ions. So the sodium ions are in the permutate, permutate also we call it. So the water that comes out will contain sodium ions, the calcium ions will be held in in the in the permute note that this is not precipitation the, it is a process that we are calling exchange so if you represent an rsc like like i have done here then you have water that contains calcium ions the the, the calcium ions will be exchanged this the calcium ions will be exchanged for sodium ions i need to put a two there because there was two uh, right there so we get this will be held in the resin as the sodium ions comes out yeah? similarly if the water contains magnesium ions that's the same thing that is going to happen now eventually you realize that the resin is becoming magnesium x yeah? the magnesium salt of the resin the calcium salt of the resin we say that the same has been exhausted now we will need to regenerate the resin in the process of regeneration we introduce brine introduce brine so the water that now contains very high concentration of sodium ions all uh, right sodium chloride so in here we have uh, the resin that has been exhausted containing sodium ions so the sodium will now be attached as calcium comes out and the the, the resin is now ready uh, for use other methods of softening um uh, permanent hard water are uh, the use of uh, uh, washing soda, uh, what we also refer to as sodium carbonate. So what will happen? The carbonate, the carbonate will react with calcium two plus ions or magnesium in whatever form: chloride, uh, sulfate, uh, hydrogen carbonate. So the only equation is going to be the same: the carbonate and all that. They are just the will be uh, just spectators so at the end of the day we are going to come up with calcium carbonate in solid state so the uh the precipitation by use of sodium carbonate is also an alternative method of softening permanent hard water and also temporary hard water now another method would be distillation what does distillation entail this is a process that we discussed in form one now distillation will involve heating to evaporation you heat the water it evaporates and every involatile substance will be left as you condense the water so the resultant water will contain strictly no it will contain no ions at all be it the sodium, be it the magnesium, no ions will be found in that one. That may be a very expensive method. It can not be used in the industry, but it's still an option. Why are we softening the water in the first place? Because uh, the hard water has some disadvantages. Number one, it obviously wastes soap. Uh, because if uh, if you are going to if rather is going to be formed you have to remove all the calcium and magnesium ions now and that means that uh, the soap is no longer available so when that that happens uh, you use a lot of soap it, uh, it may be advisable therefore to uh, get the water in a container and use it so you should not use flowing water if the water is hard because you will continually be uh, softening it then it flows away so the other thing is that uh, uh, hard water stains growth because there's scum form the scum form it may maybe yellow in color so and it will be deposited on the fabric that will make the, the growth lose uh, its, uh, its its white color probably that is what I, has happened to my coat you are very keen you will see that it's not very white uh, because it must have been washed with uh, with soap and uh, the water around here could be hard now finally uh, the, 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 the fur 
whatever that when you heat the calcium carbonate, when you heat temporary hard water, now we have agreed that it will form the calcium carbonate that will be deposited. That is what is called far. That is what is called far. So sometimes you have uh, clean the superior is very clean, and then when you boil water in it, you see some. Uh, uh, it, it, it discolors, discolors exactly where the level of the water was, the, the color is different. That is far that has been deposited on the, the, the sulfuria. Now, uh, in the at, the at the industrial scale, that can be uh, detrimental because uh, if it is in a pipe and you, you get the, the far, the, the, the build up of the far, uh, it will build up. Uh, on that build up on that and that may eventually lead to the blockage of the pipe a broad pipe is a potentially dangerous because an explosion uh, can occur now similarly the deposition of a uh, far on on a boilers eh, it insulates the boilers it is because it's a non-conductor the boilers are insulated Boilers are insulated, therefore, you need to use more heat to raise the temperature of the water. That is again uh, wasteful. So, does hard water also have some advantages? And the answer to that is obviously yes. Now, we have the calcium ions. Eh? Yeah, calcium ions. Calcium ions are the nutrients. Uh, they help in the development of strong bonds. Now, water that contains a uh, uh, ca uh, ca uh, the, the, the hard water, hard water will be safer for drinking at home. Why is that so? Because hard water, the, the it will lead to the deposition of the lead salt. The lead salt that is formed from hard water will be insoluble. So if you are using lead pipes, and of course pipes in the past were made from lead, well, uh, that, that's where we get the word pramba, the pramba, pramba, because they used prabama, uh, which is the other name for red, uh, to make to make pipe. So pipes, the red pipes will will ionize yeah? when you you expose them to water. They will ionize to form lead ions. Now these lead ions, they get to the consumer. They are heavy metals. Heavy metals are are poisonous. Now, so what will happen if the water was hard? So the lead ions will, of course, combine with the, with the sulfate, uh, if it is permanently hard water, to form lead sulfate. This is in solid state and will be deposited on the pipe that prevents further ionization. Of course, similarly, if it was a hydrogen carbonate, the lead hydrogen carbonate will definitely decompose to form lead carbonate because uh, only the carbonate of magnesium and calcium will exist in a solution form. In solid state, we only have sodium and potassium carbonate. Those are the only ones that can be obtained in solid state. This, this, the hydrogen carbonate of calcium and magnesium will exist, but only in solution form. As you have seen, if you've tried to heat the solution so that you can crystallize the, mag the, 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 the magnesium hydrogen carbonate, it will decompose to form the magnesium carbonate. So you can never get the, the hydrogen carbonate of magnesium and calcium in solid state. Now, and those two, but now when you get to when you get to lead, it cannot even exist at room temperature in solution form. So it will definitely decompose to form lead carbonate that again will be deposited on the pipe that will prevent the ionization of the lead pipe. In summary, let us uh, uh, just observe this. It will sum up exactly what we have run soap about hard the soap molecule, sodium stearate. You will recall that it's difficult to use soap, sodium stearate, with hard water. Instead, you get a scum. If you keep using the soap, the water will eventually soften as the soap reacts with all the calcium ions, forming a scum which floats to the surface as a solid. And once all the calcium has precipitated, the soap works normally and you'll start to get a lather again. However, this wastes soap. So we need to find something cheaper that will react with the calcium ions in the water and form a precipitate, sort of removing them from the water. Enter washing soda, sodium carbonate. Much cheaper than soap.
When you add the soda, the calcium ions join up with the carbonate ions, forming limestone as a precipitate, leaving water free of the hard ions. Now only the sodium ions remain in solution, balancing the sulfate or hydrogen carbonate that used to be with the calcium. You can remove temporary hardness by boiling the water, but this is expensive and causes lime to deposit on the sides of your container. So here's a question. What is the chemical change that happens when you boil water containing temporary hardness, that is hardness caused by calcium hydrogen carbonate? Pause the video whilst you think of your answer. Well, the answer is that the calcium hydrogen carbonate splits up into calcium carbonate, which is the lime scale, carbon dioxide and water. The best way to remove hardness is actually to use something called an iron exchange resin. These have a fixed anionic lattice, a bit like clay, initially balanced by positive sodium ions. As hard water flows through, the calcium ions are exchanged for the sodium ions, so that the calcium ions sort of stick to the clay and the sodium ions come out into the water. And in this way the water is softened because the calcium is no longer there. Obviously after a time the resin gets full of calcium ions and you have to reactivate it. And to do this you pour concentrated salt solution, that sodium chloride solution, very high concentration, so that it's high enough to reverse the reaction and the calcium chloride comes out in solution and the column is again full of sodium ions and ready for use. To compare the hardness of different water samples, you can take a fixed volume, say 25 cc of the hard water, and run soap solution in from a burette bit by bit, shaking each time until the soap lathers. That means you'll see bubbles on the surface and the more soap solution you have to use the harder will be the water. The Kenya National Examination Council expects you to be in a position to do the following after this topic and I hope you after you've looked at that uh, video several times you'll be able to do the following. Can you define an acid a base and a salt. Number two, can you explain the difference between aqueous solution of weak and strong acid, weak and strong bases, based on the degree to which they dissociate into ions? Number three, can you write the formula, an ionic equation for specified acid, base, and precipitation reaction? Now, is it possible to explain the effect of solvent in acid-base character? Can you test for the presence of some specified cations and anions? And can you identify the precipitate and complex ion produced by specified cations and anions reactions? Can you explain the use of solvatic curves in extraction of salt? What about stating the types and causes of water hardness? Finally, can you state the effect and explain the method of removal of water hardness? If you can do all that, then the objective of this topic has been achieved. If not, then you may need to just go over the video several times and be in a position to do that. See you in the next topic. Thank you.